Alright, welcome back to part 7 of the Jewelry Box Making Series. As you can see, we're going straight in with cutting the lid off the box. I thought about using the banter for this, but I was alright that I could get some blade drift, so I thought the table saw was the best option, and I'm very happy with how it turned out. As you can see, I added masking tape around the box, and that is to eliminate the tear out, and especially because I'm using a lot of veneers on this box, I didn't want any of that chipping out or blowing out the other side. I recommend putting uh, masking tape on your work whenever using a power tool. I mainly use it on the mitre saw when I'm cutting veneers. And uh, yeah, it works very well. And as you can see here, it left a very nice cut and none of the veneer uh, chipped out the other side. So now I'm adding the decorative corners to the bottom of the box. And uh, this will add a very nice effect. Uh, it will make the box look like it's floating in the middle and just being uh, supported by the corners. And yeah, I think it looks very nice. I gave it a bit of a sand and put a bit of white spirit on it to see what it would look like with finish. And I think that black American walnut looks amazing with white spirit on it. And I can't wait to see what the whole box would look like with the final finish on it. I'm not really sure what I'm going to finish the box with yet. I'm thinking about French polish, but I could use Danish oil. Now it's time to cut out the holes for the drawers. You won't be able to see it here, but I spent an hour marking out where the drawer fronts will go with a marking gauge. I used the bottom of the box uh, as my reference uh, to get everything all square. And I'm just using the chisel now to make those lines more prominent. I thought of lots of different methods of cutting the, the, the holes out, but in the end I chose the router. I just lowered the bit a little bit at a time uh, until I got through the other side. And now to make the uh, sides very flat, I set up a fence as you can see here and made everything square. And I just run the router along each side at a time. And that left a very nice finish. Obviously a router bit leaves a curved corner so I used a chisel to uh, make each corner square and I'm very happy with how it turned out. Now I'm not sure why I didn't film this, but to get the top and bottom of the drawer front flat, I used the fence that comes with the router and I referenced that fence at the bottom of the box and that's how I got the flat sides on the top and bottom as you can see there. And with the small size, I just used a chisel to make them square and straight and uh, it worked very well in the end.
watching part seven of the jewelry box making series. This was quite a difficult part. Cutting off the lid was quite challenging and definitely cutting out the holes for the drawers was quite difficult, but it all worked out and went well in the end. In the next part of the series, I'll be making the drawers for the box, which I can't wait to get started on. So look out for that video and that should be a good one. If you haven't subscribed already, feel free to do so. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. If you think your friends will enjoy watching this series as well, please share this video. Comment down below if you've got any questions or you just want to chat. And yeah, thanks for watching everyone. I'll see you in the next video.